So, as a realtor here in New York City, I believe it would be inappropriate of me to at the very least not touch on the lawsuit that's taking place right now. We're basically has been ruled a class action lawsuit against some of the biggest real estate companies in the US where a homeowner basically got together and stated that they shouldn't be paying for a buyer's agent after the fact of services rendered by a real estate broker to sell their home. Now I kind of spoke on this in a little bit and kind of spoke on this a little bit in a previous video but I'm gonna to touch on it again because, you know, the case is going forward, it looks like. And this will mean dramatic changes for the real estate industry, especially for real estate agents. You know, we, well, at least I, I have in mind that what if they win? You know, what, what, is, what is the possibilities of them winning and what does that mean for me the marketplace and etc cetera, etc cetera. so basically what it looks like is that you know the homeowners have gotten together i mean after services have been rendered gotten together basically stated that we shouldn't have had to pay a buyer's agent now unfortunately i don't you know it's it's the it's the justice system it's the court system it's the lack of critical thinking among people when a listing agent, when you as a homeowner, let me break it down for people who don't know. When the homeowner says, I wanna list, I wanna sell my home, number one, they can sell their home by themselves as a for sale by owner. However, the studies and statistics show that nine times out of 10, they're gonna take less money overall and they're probably gonna take less money overall. They're probably gonna have a longer process there's gonna be a, a little bit more stress is this for everybody no is this a 100% written rule absolutely not this is most of the time most of the time a homeowner cannot is not gonna negotiate on their behalf in a proper way to something that they're emotionally tied to the way as a professional could and would being objective not being in the mix of the transaction not only that, the marketing. It's not just a sign. It's professional photos. It's professional videos. It's VR. I'm, I'm sorry, it, it's having maybe virtual kind of uh, showings that, that are po a possibility. It's how you present the house. It's even when a buyer meets you as a homeowner, do they get a feeling that you took care of this house? Do If you want the highest price, you know, do they get a feeling that you care for this house? Do they get a care that you respect, have respect or show some type of consideration for them as a buyer? Trust me, I've seen transactions and things where somebody had liked the house, they didn't like the owner, they didn't buy the house. <laughs> it happens. That that trust factor, your, your attorney, are you dealing with a criminal attorney for a real estate transaction? Are you dealing with a divorce attorney for a real estate transaction? These things matter because you might need to get in touch with your attorney at 11 a.m. But if they're in court until one, two o'clock, that means everything is slowed down until one, two o'clock comes. And that does cause compounding factors that need to be taken into consideration during the process of selling your home because everyone needs to be able to communicate with everyone, especially during the last 30, 45 days of the process when getting ready to close and the paperwork and documentation, you wanna be able to reach your attorney, your mortgage broker or, or the buyer's mortgage broker. Are you able to handle the finance details of of looking at the buyer's paperwork and understand that they're a good catch or not. If you have three offers and everyone's giving you the same price, but this one is putting down 50%. This one, I'm sorry, this one is putting down 100,000, 50,000, 20, you know, credit score, income. All these things have to be taken into consideration to gauge, is this a good buyer or not? It's not, oh, they want to offer me something and they're putting down three and a half, five percent or, oh, they're putting down 20%. No, there, there are just other factors that have to be taken into consideration. So I say all that to say, one, a realtor's job is not putting up a sign and hey, your house is sold. There's a lot more that I didn't even that I did not discuss as well as did discuss that goes into the process of selling a home. 
and we're not even talking about buying a home. What I believe is going to happen with this lawsuit is that number one, they're going to state that buyer buyer agents are going to get compensated by their buyer clients. However, buyers are buying a home. They usually have a set limited amount of funds to go towards purchasing the home anyway. The last thing a buyer wants is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars extra to go towards an agent. What's going to happen is the people who know how to find deals, get listings, and get in front of sellers, their income and business is going to increase. Why? Because instead of there being two people on a transaction, now you might have situations where the buyer is going to go, because just like it happened to me. So it happens to me now more than it did before, where buyers are going to come straight to me as the agent and say, hey, I don't have an agent. You can keep more of the commission so I don't have to pay you. Uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. And so me as an agent, I'm still gonna go in and say, all right, my commission is 4%. Even if I'm not giving 2%, I'm giving, I'm taking 4%. And then from there, if I gotta negotiate, all right, I'll come down to three and a half, that's it. If I don't have to, or if the, 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 the statutes come to, oh, you don't compensate a buyer's agent. The buyer's clients, the, uh, the buyers compensate the buyer's agents. Okay, fine. I'm still at 4%. And it doesn't make sense to me because at the end of the day, you negotiate with the owner prior to anything. You sit down with them and say, hey, this is 4%, 5%, 6%. I've heard of people doing 7%. I've heard of people doing 8%. To me, that's just ridiculous. I don't go above five. You negotiate prior and then y'all sit down and state, okay, listen, this is what's going to them or this is what's going to be to them. Or sometimes homeowners don't even ask. They're just like, all right, 5% fine, assign, sign, sell my host, I'm ready to go. Everyone's situation is different. So this the lawsuit really doesn't make sense to me, but I'm not sweating it. At the end of the day, number one, I understand that they will get rid of real estate agents. Maybe not this year, maybe not next year, maybe three, maybe five, maybe 10 years. Eventually it's coming. Like every other industry is coming. Even if they don't get rid of real estate agents, number two, there is going to be a decline in the need for real estate agents. What's probably gonna happen is like the 80-20 rule now. Those agents that are still around, they're gonna do more and more business. Those who are not doing a lot are gonna fall off. To me, all this shows is a lack of accountability for what you as a homeowner, as a person, negotiated and bargained for. And then you coming back after services are rendered, it doesn't make sense to me. I do think there's a lot of other things going on behind the so behind the scenes because again, they are changing up the financial system. They're trying to they're gonna bring in tokenization, they're gonna switch up the accounting process and blockchain and all this other stuff. So maybe this could lead into that to some degree. I don't know for sure. I just know that I'm not gonna be swept up swept up into the BS. I'm not gonna think in terms of fear being fearful. I know that at the end of the day, there is no platform where homeowners could just go and sign up and say, hey, I'm going to sell my home. Now, in the future, there might be a tokenized platform where everyone just uses this one Zillow platform or something like that. And you can sell your home through it in, in shares, like share, like in, in tokenized shares where you can sell fractions of your home. I, I know that's the future. I know that's the future. I've read about it. I've, I've watched videos. The, the infrastructure, the regulation, the, the baseline financial system is not in place to allow that to happen yet. So I definitely believe we have a couple more years. But there is no platform or one conglomerate where a homeowner could easily sign up for this app, sign up for this program, and put your home for sale. And, and again, I personally am thinking about how can I automate myself? How can I automate the other 1.5 million agents? Because the first person who comes up with the technology to take out the agents, give the homeowners more money, and make the process a lot more simpler, is going to make millions and billions of dollars. So I'm thinking. For now, though, homeowners will probably continue to do the same thing they've been doing, which is, for the last hundred years or so, you call an agent. You call the first agent that comes to mind, that's that's been following up with you. Because again, it's a process. It's really a process. Understand something. When somebody wants to sell their home, this is not something that they've been thinking about for a weekend and they just, all right, let me call the agent and put out. No. Nine times, unless you're an expired listing. Okay? But nine times out of ten, the generic 
A to Z process is a homeowner is thinking about selling. They're thinking about selling six months, nine months, 12 months, a year, two years prior to actually putting the house on the market, prior to actually being a for sale by owner, prior to actually speaking to an agent or investor. And that's another thing I didn't, I didn't mention. Agents will definitely help you sell your home higher for higher than you would if you went directly to an investor. Investors buy and sell hundreds of homes a year. They are skilled in negotiating and talking you down. Facts. So, damn, I'm trying to figure out where I left off. Ultimately, I believe a lot of reshaping is going to come to the financial system as well as real estate down the line. I believe that these homeowners are shooting themselves in the foot thinking they're saving money. <laughs> and it, I guarantee you, if you were to just do a comparison of the people who I buy homes and I offer homes and all these other stuff, and you do the numbers based upon the average sale price from a straight going straight to an investor in relation to an average sales price working with an agent, I guarantee you the agent would be higher, even after commissions and, and fees. But people don't think, they just feel, you know? Um, and it is what it is. It is what it is. I understand something that everyone has to understand. <clears throat> In life, there's seasons and, and seasons, seasonalities to things, right? For example, if you got into computer science and computers in like the 80s, 90s, back when before internet computers were really bussing, and you carried over till now, you are successful. If you are somebody who stated like, if, if you rode real estate for the last 10, 20, 30 years, you're, you're doing well, right? We have to be able to ride the wave of certain things. Real estate's wave is, is you know, the bubble ended last year. It's gonna season, it's gonna die down. It's probably gonna pick back up in a couple years. We have to ride the wave. And that's a wave to any business uh, or anything in life. But as far as this lawsuit, I think it's foolish. Doesn't make sense. I'm not saying it from a standpoint of being a realtor. I'm saying it from a standpoint of thinking logically. If you had a problem with the services or whatever you were going to pay or, or anything, you don't sign up for it. You don't sign a contract stating that, yes, I'm going to pay you for your services and then come back and I'm going to sue you for what you like. It's, it doesn't make sense. But either way, it is what it is. I appreciate you watching. appreciate you tuning in. All we do is adapt. Just keep adapting. Later, folks.